Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at the three main equations that we do during common filtering. Those are of course iterative equations. We do those each time we get a new data set in or a new data point. We recalculate the Kalman gain, we recalculate the new estimate, and we re recalculate the new error in the estimate. So these are the three processes that we go through over and over again. All right, the common gain is the ratio of the error in the estimate divided by the error in the estimate added to the error in the measurement. If the Kalman gain is large, what that means is that the error in the estimate is large compared to the error in the measure, so that the error of the estimate divided by the error estimate is almost equal to one, and this is not much of a contributor in the denominator. So when the Kalman gain is large, the error in the estimate is large compared to the error in the measurement. On the other hand, if the Kalman gain is small, that means that the error in the measurement is large compared to the error in the estimate. On the second equation, you can see that the new estimate calculator, or I should say the current estimate calculated, is equal to the previous estimate plus the Kalman gain times the difference between the measured value and the previous estimate. Again, if the Kalman gain is large, that means that the error in the estimate is large compared to the error in the measurement, and so therefore we want to take a lot of this difference into consideration. That means that the measurement must be fairly accurate, and therefore we can adjust the estimate by taking the difference and taking most of that with a large Kalman gain. However, if the Kalman gain is small, which means that the error in the measurement is large compared to the error in the estimate, that means we will just want to take a small portion of this difference, otherwise the measurement will throw us off and we'll get the estimate to be far from where it needs to be. We just want to take a small adjustment because we can't trust the measurement that well. There is a large uncertainty, a large error in the measurement if the Kalman gain is small. Finally, we want to recalculate the error in the estimate current compared to the previous. The equation is that we take the previous error in the estimate, multiply that times the error of the measurement and divide that by the sum of the error in the measurement plus the error of the estimate that was calculated previously. The equation is often also written like this. The new error in the estimate that you're currently calculating is equal to 1 minus the Kalman gain times the previous estimate. And in the case that we we'll work with matrices, this of course will then become the identity matrix, but for a single value it simply be, will be 1 minus the Kalman gain. So this factor that we multiply the previous error with is really the inverse of the size of the Kalman gain. If the Kalman gain is large, 1 minus a large number, meaning close to 1, will give us a very tiny number. That means if the Kalman gain is large, coming back over here, if the Kalman gain is large, that means the error in the measurement is very small, which means that new data put in can then very quickly get us to the true value, and therefore we will reduce the error in the estimate because the error in the measurement is small, that means we will have small variations as new data comes in, and the error in the estimate will get small very quickly, so therefore we, multi we multiply the previous error by a very small number, very quickly reducing the, the, the calculation for the error in the estimate. However, if the Kalman gain is very small, come back over here, if the Kalman gain is small, that means that the error in the measurement is very large, if the error in the measurement is very large, we don't want to change the error in the estimate very quickly because, again, so what we want to do is we want to very slowly zero in to the estimated value or to the correct value because measured values coming in with large errors can throw us quickly, so we want to make sure that we don't get fooled by that error in the measurement and want to zero in much more slowly. If the errors of the measurement are very small, we want to zero in quickly. If the errors in the measurement are large, we want to zero in a little bit slower. In all cases, the error in the estimate, notice, will always be smaller as the previous one. So the error in the estimate will get smaller over time, especially if the Kalman gain is large. If the Kalman gain is small, it'll take a little longer. If the Kalman gain is large, it'll go much more quickly. So those are the three calculations. You can see how the Kalman gain drives the speed at which the estimated value was zero in on the true value. Again, it all depends upon the expected error in the measurement. If they're large, it'll go more slowly. If they're small, it'll go more quickly. But in all cases, the Kalman gain gets us, there, gets us there much more quickly than just about any other method you can use to try and filter data down to where you get accurate values for the, for the estimated values 
that will be close to the true values even when the measured values dance all over the place with a certain amount of error and certainty. And that's the beauty of common filtering and the common game.